Welcome, Maeva, to the cruise webinar um, with uh, French Polynesia and Paul Gauguin Cruises. Uh, I'd like to kick it off by showing you a bit of a video. Um, so we'll uh, dive right in. French Polynesia waits for you with open arms. This isn't just a place, it's an atmosphere. She possesses her very own consciousness. Love and light flood every corner of her incredible world. And those who visit are forever changed by it. Go barefoot. Soak in her sun. Be rejuvenated by her sand and the smiling faces of her people. Just breathe. Life here can be very big or it can be very small. And new friends await in the most impossibly interesting ways. Places you never knew existed. Now, you'll never forget. When you long to bask in one of the most unspoiled places on Earth, she's waiting for you. Her door and her heart are always open. Paul Gauguin Cruises. Let us help you make French Polynesia part of your story. I just love that video. It transports me back to French Polynesia and Tahiti every time I watch it. So um, I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Shannon McGee. I am the director of sales for Paul Gauguin Cruises. I work very closely with our wonderful partners um, at the Cruise Web to bring you all things Paul Gauguin and French Polynesia. So today I'm going to talk about the destination. Um, I will talk about um, the itineraries and our ship, our lovely ship. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please pop them in the question box. Uh, I can certainly get to some at the end of the uh, webinar. Um, and if there's anything that I don't get to, you can uh, talk to your wonderful professional travel advisors or your preferred travel advisor um, at the cruise web um, and they can certainly help you. They are well versed um, in everything uh, Paul Gauguin. So let's jump right in. Uh, let's talk about the location. Um, while I know um, it is a destination that isn't always um, something that people think they can get to or they feel like sometimes it might be a little inaccessible. And while the destination is certainly remote, it is definitely not inaccessible. Um, it is only our, or our um, home port city of Papiete, Tahiti is only eight hours from Los Angeles. Um, many of you, I am sure, have been to Hawaii, um, which is six hours. Um, from LA. So we like to say that we're just a movie and a drink, or in my case, maybe two uh, drinks beyond Hawaii. Um, and you don't have to stop in Hawaii uh, on the way to Tahiti from LA. It is straight shot um, from Los Angeles and many other uh, Western uh, US cities um, to Papiete. A couple fun facts about the location. Uh, French Polynesia or Tahiti. And of course, you can, um, you know, use the terms Tahiti to talk about the whole area. French Polynesia is certainly um, the entire area, which we'll look a little, look at the map in a little um, bit here. But um, you, you know, everyone certainly understands what you mean. 
uh, when you say Tahiti. Um, it, it, it definitely goes by the whole area, uh, goes by the, the main island um, of Tahiti name. So uh, French Polynesia or Tahiti is as far south of the equator as Hawaii is north. Uh, they share the same um, time zone. They share the same weather pattern. Um, what they don't share is the number of tourists. Uh, there are only, uh, in Tahiti, uh, we receive as much tourism in one year that Hawaii gets in one seven day period. Um, so that should certainly frame it in your mind as to um, what the experience is like. Wide open spaces, few people. Um, it is an amazing destination for getting away from it all and uh, being um, you know, as uh, solitary uh, as you like. Um, so this is uh, just a map, and of course it isn't to scale um, of uh, French Polynesia. Um, it is, we do visit three of the five French Polynesian archipelagos, um, plus the Cook Islands, Fiji and Bali, which we'll talk about uh, those as well. Um, but when you're thinking of Tahiti um, or French Polynesia, mostly what comes to mind are the society islands and you'll see those um, kind of in the middle of the map here uh, they include Tahiti, Morea, uh, Bora Bora of course you know where everyone thinks of the overwater bungalows, Huahini, Taha and Raiatea um, so those are the society islands um, of course Tahiti is the largest of the um, society islands or any French Polynesian island um, it has uh, the the government center uh, you know, the main airport is there. Uh, that is the center of all commerce um, in French Polynesia. Um, so it is also made up of two, two islands, the big island, which is Tahiti, and then Tahiti Iti, which is the little island um, that you see connected um, there. Uh, then we also have the two Omotus, which you'll see to the right of the screen. Those are also part of French Polynesia. Uh, the Marquesas Islands, were, which are up to the north, and some of you may have seen those um, from Survivor, um, very rugged. Uh, the Austral and the Gambier Islands are to the south. We do not visit those two island chains, but they are part of French Polynesia. Um, and then you'll see the Cook Islands here, um, which are of course part of the South Pacific, but um, are not part of French Polynesia. And then you have Tonga and Fiji. And then if you look uh, further to the west, uh, you run into Indonesia, which we will uh, talk about in a bit. Um, so this is the area. This is kind of the lay of the land. It gives you an idea um, of where you might be. Um, and it is certainly one of the most beautiful destinations I have ever been to. So when you're talking about uh, French Polynesia or Tahiti, uh, what, what you might be wondering is, so why would I cruise or why Paul Gauguin cruises um, in French Polynesia? We are uh, the... Uh, the ship, um, there are others, but we actually were built for the destination. This ship was built to cruise around uh, this area. Uh, we have a very shallow draft, and what that means is the distance between the water line and the bottom of the ship is just 19 feet. Uh, we can get into any lagoon um, up close to the islands um, as, as possible. Um, this, this ship has a huge amount of outdoor uh, wide open deck space, as you can see from this aerial view, um, which is of course what you want uh, when you're in French Polynesia. Uh, the ship is a small ship experience. It is uh, 330 guests maximum. Uh, there are 165 staterooms and they are all ocean view. So there is not an inside uh, stateroom anywhere on this ship. 70% um, of those staterooms are balcony staterooms. Again, it's what you want to do when you're in French Polynesia. You wanna be out in, out in the outdoors. You know, you might, might wanna have your coffee in the morning um, from that private balcony or your breakfast. Um, and you can certainly do that on this small ship experience. Um, we also are really an extension of the destination. Uh, we have been here the longest. Um, we have deep ties to the community. Um, and the culture um, and a lot of, uh, you know, really uh, solid relationships with uh, vendors and fishermen and things like that. So um, it is really, you know, when people think of cruising in French Polynesia, um, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, of course, is Paul Gauguin Cruises. Um, so again, it's an extension of the destination and you'll see as you look at the ship, 
um, it really is uh, all encompassing um, of the Polynesian culture. So uh, this is some of the stuff that we uh, just talked about a bit. Uh, none of the staterooms are less than 200 square feet. Um, we have uh, the among the highest at sea crew to guest ratio. Um, it is one crew to about every one and a half guest on board. Uh, there are full size um, bathrooms with bathtubs in each stateroom as well. We have received many accolades, um, some in the past year or so. Uh, one of the really uh, great honors we just received in July was the best small ship ocean cruise liner um, for uh, from Travel and Leisure magazine. You can find all of these accolades, many for food um, and of course uh, staff and service on board. You can find those uh, certainly on our website. Um, as I mentioned, the ship is really an extension of the destination and we have seven local Tahitian host entertainers, we call them the Gogans and the Gogines, on board every sailing with you. Um, they are your stewards to the uh, Polynesian culture. Um, they, you know, do language lessons, they'll do dance lessons, they show you pareo tying um, and lay making. Um, all of those things maybe during the day and they'll speak to you about uh, the culture and cultural aspects of the islands um, and in the evening they become entertainers um, also they even on our private beach days they're entertainers they uh, you know play some music they might play volleyball with the guest um, they're always there uh, to have that warm uh, welcome to our guest um, also even if the staff is not um, uh, from the area, uh, from French Polynesia, they certainly embody that um, that French Polynesian spirit. Uh, it is the kind of service that is very easy. It's not forced or formal. Again, as I mentioned, uh, there's about one staff to every one and a half guest on board. Um, they will likely remember your name and your drink order um, and you know different things about you. Uh, during the sailing. I had one guest uh, that I was speaking to uh, just recently tell me that, uh, you know, she liked to have a glass of champagne when she got back on board the ship um, in the afternoon. Her husband liked a Stella. Um, in the evening, she liked to have her espresso martini, not ba made by the bar in the restaurant, but, but the bar up in the back of the ship. And the staff, you know, would have that ready for her, go up to the back of the ship, get the espresso martini, bring it down before she even asked for it. So this is the kind of service um, that you'll find on board. Again, it isn't forced or formal or fussy. It is just a very easy, um, friendly and natural um, type service. We have many long port stays. So you'll find when you're looking through some of our itineraries um, that we have overnight stays. You know, we are, um, also the tenders, you can see the ship is docked out there in Lagoon. Um, we, we do tender in most locations, but the tenders are minutes. You know, sometimes when you're on a larger ship um, in the area, you would be 30 minutes, 45 minutes to tender back into the island because of the um, shallow lagoons. And we, again, with that shallow draft can get into um, any lagoon area in French Polynesia and uh, closer, so the port time is much longer. I mentioned this when we looked at the aerial view of the ship that we have expansive outdoor deck space. Um, you'll find and we'll talk about that we even have outdoor dining, um, outdoor uh, entertainment. So uh, there's a ton of outdoor space. And again, it's where you wanna be when you're in French Polynesia. Uh, exclusive retreats. We have two private beach experiences on most sailings. Um, again, we'll get to talk about some of the itineraries, but you'll find that most, all of the sailings will stop in Taha, which is where our private island is, our Motu Mahana. Motu Mahana is one of the best days that I have ever experienced on any vacation. Um, I should back up and tell you, uh, before I worked for Paul Gauguin, I worked for another travel company um, on the land side and for a vacation um, with my husband, we cruised um, on the Paul Gauguin in 2018. Um, and it was one of the best vacations that we ever had. Um, one of the most relaxing vacations that we ever had. And this Motu Mahana in Taha was one of the best days that I spent, I have spent on any vacation. Um, it is completely customizable. Of course, you can take a book, sit by the beach and read it. You can snorkel, um, do drift snorkeling on one side of the island. 
uh, sit in the water on another side of the island, play volleyball or, or um, partake in the entertainment. Um, there's a beach grill. Uh, there's also a gentleman with a bar that floats around out in the water and serves guests while they're kayaking by or swimming by. So um, it is a really laid back experience. Um, and one of the best days, like I said, that I have had on any vacation. Uh, the other private beach day uh, we have is in Bora Bora. Um, Bora Bora, most times, and I think pretty much on all of the itineraries that stop in Bora Bora, we do an overnight, uh, meaning you arrive, um, say, on a Tuesday at 8 a.m., uh, spend the whole day there overnight on the ship in Bora Bora, then um, the next day in the evening or late evening, depart from Bora Bora. So you actually have two days that you can do two uh, separate experiences, maybe a shore excursion one day, um, and then the private beach experience another day. This is a bit different from the Motu Mahana private beach experience in that it's what you see right here. Uh, there's a cooler with uh, drinks, there are uh, chairs, uh, you can do paddle boarding, um, but that is it. So it's one of those places where you will disconnect for sure if you leave your cell phone um, back on the ship. Uh, you can go out there and not be bothered by another person if that's what you're looking for. So we are certainly the best value in luxury. Um, we are a luxury experience. Service is five star for sure. Um, in your all-inclusive fare, it includes all of your meals. Um, it includes complimentary drinks, including alcoholic beverages, wine, um, and non-alcoholic beverages, of course. Your mini bar that is replenished daily with beer, wine, soda. Um, we also include gratuities. We do have uh, butlers in our suite categories, um, which are A, B, Ocean Owner Suite and Grand Suite. Um, and of course, there's uh, welcome flowers and fruit in your stateroom. So let's take a look at the value of traveling with uh, Paul Gauguin. So if you're looking at uh, a seven night sailing, we'll just give that as an example here. Um, we have uh, a five, five different islands um, in French Polynesia or in the society islands that you would visit on a seven night sailing. Um, everything's included, the food, the alcohol, um, the entertainment, uh, the water sports, uh, the private beach experiences. And if you're comparing it to land, you know, to do all of that uh, and travel to five different uh, islands and the society islands, you certainly would need more than seven nights to do so. Um, you know, you might be able to visit two uh, in that time frame. And it's not that easy. You know, with the uh, Gauguin, you, uh, of course, pack and unpack one time, which is, uh, you know, like a no-brainer for cruises. However, uh, the ease of just cruising around to these beautiful islands and being able to see this much in seven days um, would be impossible uh, to do it by, by land uh, vacation. Also, if you're a diver, uh, something to think about is, you know, when you're on the Gauguin, you can dive pretty much every day because you're not flying to your next destination where, as if you were, uh, trying to visit all these destinations and do diving, you wouldn't be able to dive and fly in the same day. So it's so it's so easy. It's such an easy experience um, and comfortable for sure. So what is life like on board? Let's talk about the dining. So really important. We have some amazing dining uh, on the ship. We have three main restaurants and we also include 24-hour um, room service. Uh, La Veranda is our French-inspired restaurant. It has a French tasting menu with indoor-outdoor dining. Now, uh, you can eat in La Veranda uh, as many times as you wish during your sailing. However, you do need to make reservations because it is not uh, for dinner. It is not a huge venue, so uh, we couldn't accommodate every guest on board the ship. So you need to make reservations um, for that dining experience. Um, it is open for breakfast and lunch. It's also open for afternoon tea um, as you're getting back on uh, board the ship uh, from your day out. Lake Grill is one of our other um, dining experiences that do require reservations. It is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it is an outdoor dining uh, venue. Uh, really amazing French Polynesian Asian fusion uh, for dinner. Uh, one of my best tips that I can give you is if you uh, make a reservation at Lay Grill and you're overnight in Bora Bora, you'll be dining under the stars while looking at this beautiful uh, idyllic lagoon behind you. 
um, just an amazing experience. And this, again, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and dinner does require reservations. Uh, La Trois is our main dining restaurant. Uh, this is only open for dinner, um, but it does not require reservations, and it you can sit with whom you wish. So if it's just two people traveling together, you want a table for two, that's certainly um, allowable. You can uh, meet friends and have them for dinner, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, also, 24-hour room service is included. I mentioned in the start of this webinar that uh, you can sit on the lagoon and have your breakfast, sorry, can't sit on the lagoon. You can sit over the lagoon on your balcony um, having breakfast, um, and, but you can also order the menu from La Trois, uh, it to be delivered right to your stateroom. The La Trois menu changes every, ev every evening, um, and so it's, of course, of course by course changing menu, uh, and sometimes it includes things like fresh catch of the day, where we work with local local fishermen. Um, and then there's also daily standards. So if there's uh, something, you know, you're not, nothing tickles your fancy on that uh, changing menu, there are daily standards of steak and, and Caesar salad and things like that that you can always order um, from the menu there. Wonderful entertainment options on board the ship. Um, again, you know, something that you might find uh, traveling on the Gauguin that you might not find if you were to stay um, on a land-based vacation in French Polynesia is a lot of entertainment. So um, in the evening in the Grand Salon, we have, um, you know, a band or there's dance troupe. Um, there might be a, a chef's demonstration. There's a crew talent show, which everybody loves. So every evening, um, we have uh, entertainment there. Also, we have guest host on board. So in addition to those um, Polynesian hosts, you'll find that we have lecturers like marine biologists and art historians, um, winemakers, uh, many different other uh, guest hosts on board that uh, will do uh, lectures. This is a completely customizable experience. Obviously, uh, these things are there for the taking, but if it's not something you want to do, the, you can take a book and sit by the pool, the undercrowded pool where you'll never have to fight for a deck chair, um, and you know, read your book and relax or head to the beach. So um, these are definitely things that are available, but not mandatory by any means. I talked about the Gauguins uh, doing entertainment. Uh, there's tons of entertainment happening um, all the time during the day and of course during the evening. And then we like to say, of course, that every sunset marks the beginning of another nightly adventure. Or if you're an early to bed kind of person, every sunset marks uh, a very uh, a relaxing night of sleep and an early morning sunrise. We do have a children's program on board. While we do not uh, have many small children that travel with us, uh, we do have uh, a Moana, the Moana Explorer program that happens on the summer sailings and also over the holidays. Um, it is in partnership with the Conservation Foundation, Te Mana O Te Moana, um, which one of their big initiatives is to save sea turtles. Um, but it's a great, you know, as you would imagine, it isn't anything like a big ship uh, children's program experience. It's not somewhere where you're gonna drop your kids off um, or grandchildren off and uh, come back and pick them up. It is for families. So, um, you know, families can join on the, nat uh, the naturalist led activities, uh, stargazing, snorkeling, uh, crafts, anything like that. And all of it is included. Um, so, it is a great program um, and it is a great foundation um, for conservation um, and protecting uh, the sea life. As included in your cruise fare uh, is water sports. So we have water sports that you can happen right off the back of the ship here. You can see we have a marina that folds down. Uh, you know, you can do paddle boarding and kayaks and you can get snorkel gear and snorkel right off the back of the ship. You can also take that snorkel gear, head to the beach um, and use it there as well. We have a great dive program. Um, we are a PADI certified dive shop. We have a dive master um, on board the ship. Uh, the dive boat leaves directly from the Paul Gauguin, right off that uh, marina off the back. Uh, I'm not a diver, but my husband is. So when we were on board, um, you know, he did two dives in a day. You know, you know, in 10 minutes, he was actually in the water diving. So um, it is an amazing experience. And again, uh, completely easy. Uh, it is not part of the cruise fare. 
uh, you would have to pay for uh, the dives individually. Um, as our excursions are not included in the cruise fare, those are a, an additional uh, fee as well. Here's the lovely pool deck. Um, you can see uh, never are you going to fight for um, a chair um, at the pool deck. And you can see um, in the background there, uh, beautiful Bora Bora. We do have a full service spa on board. Um, you know, full spa services, uh, including uh, volcanic stone massage, which is amazing. Uh, we do perform massages over the water in our private island. So in uh, Motumahana and um, Bora Bora, there are uh, set up for um, massage. Uh, so great experience. You can use any shipboard credits that we might talk about later um, for uh, a beautiful, relaxing uh, spa treatment. This is one of my favorite spots on board the ship, uh, La Palette. It is a very, very versatile space. Um, it is an indoor-outdoor bar uh, by day and by night. So uh, one of the things that I loved doing uh, was to, even though I had a balcony, I loved to go up to La Palette in the morning um, at sunrise, grab my coffee um, and a pastry, and head out to the deck and watch the sunrise. Um, it was a beautiful experience, but also in the evening, if you're a little bit of a later um, night owl, I should say, uh, we do entertainment uh, outside uh, and the bar is right there and you can dance under the stars, uh, you know, while looking back at these uh, beautiful destinations. So uh, a really versatile, beautiful space. I should mention uh, that just looking at the colors here that we were renovated. So we had a renovation uh, in the beginning of last year. Uh, we changed uh, some of the decor and pulled in a lot of these beautiful blues and greens of the area into the decor of the ship. We also uh, removed the use of heavy fuel oils um, while uh, the ship was in dry dock as well. Uh, changed out some water filtration, so um, definitely a more environmentally friendly uh, experience. So let's look at some of the staterooms. Uh, we do have a few suite categories on board, um, and then we have our balcony categories and ocean view. So this is our owner suite. There are two on board, um, you know, ranging from uh, over 500 square feet up to about 600 um, square feet. They do include a butler. Um, some other amenities include private transfers um, from the airport, uh, you know, shipboard credits and things like that. So uh, beautiful suite, stateroom, um, obviously, including a balcony. The grand suite uh, as well includes a butler um, and some of those other suite amenities like private transfers. We have our veranda suites, which are category A and category B. Uh, these staterooms do include a butler um, and some upgraded amenities um, as well. Then we have our balcony staterooms, which is gonna make up most of uh, the staterooms on the ship. Beautiful balcony, um, again, mini bar that's restocked daily, uh, full bathroom um, on, uh, on the ship. And of course it's um, full service. So no, 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 uh, uh, no worries, full uh, room service uh, as well. We do have, um, Two categories, which are ocean view categories. We have a double porthole and a picture window. So those are some of the um, staterooms that we have that do not include balcony. Uh, we are certainly very environmentally friendly um, in the operations of the ship. Um, we also, I, again, we have very strong ties to the um, local communities and the culture. So, uh, you know, using all of our local vendors and, um, you know, fishermen and local uh, farmers and things like that, and bakeries uh, to use some of the things uh, on board the ship. Let's talk about the itinerary. So um, you'll find that the core of almost everything we do or the heart of everything we do um, is a Society Islands uh, sailing. So that is a seven night sailing, uh, which includes uh, Bora Bora, Huahini, Taha Morea, um, and uh, Tahiti. Uh, I just want to point out, and probably he would kill me, uh, but this picture uh, of the gentleman in the bottom with the coconut drink uh, is actually my husband um, at Motu Mahana, um, where when we arrived, they were cutting up the coconuts and making this beautiful drink uh, for the guest and handing them out. 
So this is actually the itinerary here. So um, as I mentioned, most of our sailings will begin and end in Papiete, um, which is the capital of Tahiti. By the way, about 75% of the population of all of French Polynesia lives in Papiete. So it is gonna be the more bustling um, city center uh, area. Um, and from Papiete, we head to Huahini, um, over to Taha, which is Motumahana, where our um, private beach day experiences, onto Bora Bora and Morea. So those Bora Bora and Morea, we talk about longer port stays, those two islands will have overnight stays. Um, so overnight stay in Bora Bora, overnight stay in Morea. Um, Huahini uh, is, you know, one of those uh, very relaxed, untouched type islands. Uh, we talked about Motumahana, which is where our private beach experience is, but Taha is the vanilla island. Um, and certainly, um, you know, Tahitian vanilla is amazing. Uh, it's hand pollinated. Each orchid is hand pollinated um, to get the vanilla bean. Uh, Bora Bora is, you know, uh, what dreams are made of, where you see the beautiful overwater bungalows in the lagoon, um, you know, the big uh, mountain jutting out of the middle of all the atolls that surround. And Morea is probably one of my favorite islands. It's a beautiful mix of lovely lagoons and water, uh, but uh, you know, mountains that you can hike on and waterfalls, just a beautiful um, area. So then we'll move on to talking about the two Omotus. So um, in uh, part of the sailings that we do, we uh, will add on taking that, the heart of what we do that seven night and add on um, other destinations. So part of this is with the two Omotus. So we add um, on a 10 night sailing, we'll add on uh, Ranguroa and Fakarava. Um, these islands are a scuba diver, snorkeler, water lover's dream. They um, are part of a UNESCO or Fakarava um, is part of a UNESCO uh, designated biosphere reserve. Uh, each of Fakarava and Ranguroa are either completely enclosed or almost completely enclosed coral reef. Um, you know, and the lagoon that sits in the middle, as you see here, when you're looking at Rangiroa and Fakarava, um, has any, I mean, all and any sea life that you can possibly imagine. Um, it's basically an aquarium out there in the open sea. Um, so this is a 10 night itinerary that includes the Society Islands, which we just went over, plus the two, uh, two Omotus, which are Rangiroa and Fakarava. Still part of French Polynesia, um, but uh, the two Omotus instead of the Society Islands. Then we'll move on to another set of islands or another kind of itinerary, just a little bit different from what we typically do, um, is our Fiji, Fiji Tonga and Cook Islands itinerary. So you can see some of the pictures here, um, uh, you know, temples. Uh, the itinerary is from Papiete to Fiji, and then we also do it in the reverse. Um, so the Cook Islands, so we already talked about uh, the Society Islands where Bora Bora and Morea are, but um, then we move on to the Cook Islands. Um, the Cook Islands is a completely unspoiled uh, destination. You know, there are no branded resorts. There uh, is no building that's taller than a coconut tree. There's no crowds, there's no stoplights. There are no um, McDonald's. I hate to pick on McDonald's, but you know, there's nothing like that. No chain uh, type restaurants. They are um, in close governance uh, with uh, New Zealand and they even take the New Zealand dollar. But um, you know, it's completely unspoiled. Um, and beautiful white sand beaches, blue lagoons, lush green mountains, um, just an amazing uh, destination. And then we'll move on to Tonga. And so, um, you know, Tonga is one of those kind of untouched places as well, of course. Uh, Tonga has um, water so clear that you can see 130 uh, feet below to the bottom um, of the ocean. Uh, you know, markets with handicrafts. Um, you can take a tour of the local 
uh, gardens where you can see uh, over 500 native uh, flowers uh, from the region. Then we'll move on to Fiji. Um, and some words that you might describe Fiji with are unspoiled, unassuming, and certainly charming. Um, those are perfect words to describe it. Um, there's something for everyone. You have uh, scuba diving and snorkeling, some of the best in the world. There's museums and galleries and hiking. You can climb up the top of an ancient volcano, which is, of course, an unforgettable experience. Um, you can visit the uh, Garden of the Sleeping Giant, which includes manicured lawns, ponds, fountains, and over 2,000 rare orchids. So, um, you know, when you talk about ease of traveling on the Gauguin, certainly you can see how easy it is to get to some of these remote destinations and destinations that you might have always thought about going, but, um, you know, maybe thought were a little too inaccessible. Uh, it does cross the international dateline, uh, which can be an interesting experience uh, when you're traveling. Uh, as well. Then uh, let's move on to uh, the uh, Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. Um, you know, some of these very exotic and remote places. Uh, this also is this itinerary here, the 16 night. Um, we're, we're talking about the Bali um, back to Fiji uh, portion. Um, and we do it in reverse as well. So we're going to in January from Fiji uh, to Bali, but uh, the one we're talking about is in March, which leaves from Bali and heads back to Fiji. This is something for um, people who are really into World War II history. Um, there's a lot of that there. So this sailing is certainly for you. Um, you know, Bali is certainly um, unspoiled beaches and tons of temples and exotic foods um, are great uh, there. Uh, the Komodo Island, of course, home to the dragon not the fire breathing kind of course, but the largest lizard on earth. Um, I've been fascinated by this uh, lizard uh, since I saw it when I was young on the Discovery Channel. So really, uh, you know, the only place in the world you can find them and they actually have their own national park. So uh, really interesting stop there. Um, Timor, uh, the, the uh, Dili, uh, Timor Leste is the, um, actually just gained its independence. So it's a relatively new country in 2006. Um, so it has a lot of Portuguese influence and uh, really still relatively undiscovered. Um, then you'll head off to Papua New Guinea where um, art galleries, gardens, and World War II history are all around you. Um, so if you're looking at, um, uh, Guandal Canal, you'll see uh, that you'll be able to see the uh, site of the fiercest battle between the US and the Japanese um, during World War II, which is now actually home to their airport. Um, the uh, Samari Islands were uh, completely destroyed during, um, the British actually completely destroyed the uh, port city. Uh, fearing that the Japanese would occupy it. It has been rebuilt or was rebuilt and declared a national heritage island by the government in 2006. So a ton of amazing World War II history and a lot of exotics and different type of um, flora and fauna that you can see um, on this itinerary. Um, and it just happens twice uh, next year in the early part of the year. Um, this one we're talking about is happening in March. Some of the other things that we um, maybe won't dive too deep into here are the Cook Islands itineraries, which are an 11 night itinerary. We did talk about Aitutaki um, and stopping in the Cook Islands uh, where they are completely undiscovered, but this is something we offer and the Marquesas. So we don't have time to talk about the Marquesas today, but they are rugged and wild. So if it's something that you're interested in, you can certainly ask your uh, travel advisor about that. Um, you can extend your stay with a pre and post. Uh, your travel advisor can help you with those uh, um, arrangements. Um, you can do pre and post in uh, many of our destinations, you know, Bora Bora, Morea, uh, in Tahiti as well. We love special occasions here at Paul Gauguin. We have one of the um, most beautiful uh, complimentary uh, Polynesian blessing ceremonies at sea 
We uh, wrap the guest in this uh, Polynesian fertility blanket, take a beautiful picture. Um, it's for anyone celebrating an anniversary or uh, honeymoon um, while on board with us. And then you can also do vow renewals, uh, Tahitian wedding ceremony, which of course isn't legal, but you can uh, you know, redo your vows um, on the beach there as well. Let's talk about what you can get from your cruise web travel advisor by listening to our webinar today. So um, we do have a special offer. Uh, certain uh, sailings will receive up to a $700 per stateroom shipboard credit. Um, and the travel advisors can certainly tell you which sailings they are, but they are the ones we highlighted here today, um, certain dates. Um, and the bookings must be made before the end of the year. So let's talk about how you get there. Um, I know we talked about how easy it is to get to the destination, but um, your travel advisor can certainly help you with air arrangements. We do a seamless service with Air Tahiti Nui from LA um, into Papiete, and of course some of the exotic sailings, we would have to make other arrangements, but the lovely Cruise Web advisors will help you do that. But um, the Air Tahiti Nui package that we use um, is a seamless package where it includes a day room um, when you arrive because it typically would be an overnight flight from LA into Papiete, uh, transfer from the airport to the day room, breakfast is included, and then a transfer over to the ship. Uh, Air Tahiti Nui is a really nice experience. Uh, again, just like the Gauguin is part of the fabric of French Polynesia, Air Tahiti Nui is as well. So when you step on board, you feel like you're already in the destination. The colors, uh, the service, uh, you know, the flight attendants change their clothes three times. There's three dist distinct cabins, so you can have a first class experience if you want, a premium economy or an economy experience. Um, you know, uh, French Polynesian food, uh, it is a great experience and a great way to kick off your vacation. We do have a an air credit offer with Air Tahiti Nui on that LA service. It's a $500 airfare credit um, per person, and it is for the Q1 and Q2 sailings of 23. So the first part of, the first half of 23, I should say, those sailings will include that $500 airfare credit. It's also combinable with that lovely shipboard credit uh, that I told you about earlier. We have a wonderful, um, zero single supplement savings. And again, your cruise web travel advisor can get those uh, dates for you, but we have a solo um, travelers, zero supplement, zero extra to pay um, on certain sailings as well. And it is a great way for singles to see the destination. Um, you know, there are other singles on board. Also, if you meet couples, they kind of, you know, everybody kind of um, finds their people and, uh, you know, uh, is open so it's really a good way for uh, singles to see the destination and my last thought or one of my last thoughts for the day is why not give the gift of Tahiti for the holidays to your loved ones um, you know we have uh, great opportunities for savings in 23 um, you can wrap up a little brochure and put it under the Christmas tree or um, you know hand it off for your holiday gifts uh, to your loved ones so uh, why not give the gift of Tahiti I know I would be ecstatic if I received the gift of Tahiti for the holidays. Uh, one more thing I wanted to talk to you about is multi-gen. I mentioned our Moana Explorer program, which is wonderful at sea, but I think we're really well placed for multi-gen travel. So if you're thinking about taking your kids and your grandkids, you know, older grandkids or younger grandkids um, on a vacation, why not do the Gauguin? You know, you could. Uh, go off and do your own things in the daytime, whether it be water sports or hiking or what have you, um, and then all come back together um, for dinner. So with that, I'd like to say maruru, which is thank you in Tahitian. I appreciate your time today. Um, I also wanted to see or take a look uh, at what questions might be here in my question box. Um, all right, oh, this is a good one um, from Helen. So Helen asks, do you have to or need to take an excursion um, in every port? And the answer, uh, Helen, is no, you do not. Um, so there are many opportunities um, in the Society Islands and in the other places where you may just get off the ship and explore on your own. For example, uh, in Bora Bora, you can rent a bike for $15. It's 
flat. You can drive around the whole island, you know, stop off at Bloody Mary's uh, for lunch or head to a, a secluded uh, public beach uh, as well. Uh, one of my favorite things in Morea is the uh, hiking up to the top of Belvedere, which is the, um, you know, there's a pineapple plantation there, um, a jam uh, factory. So you can, you can hike up to the top there, um, get, you know, get a map from the ship and do that on your own. There are plenty of beaches in Huahini. Uh, when I was there, I just went to, had a little lunch, went on the beach um, right off that uh, little restaurant that I ate at uh, and hung out there for the day. So uh, you do not need to do ex an excursion, um, but uh, you know, with that $700 shipboard credit certainly can get you uh, many of the wonderful excursions. And some of the excursions, uh, which we didn't talk about, but you know, you can, in Bora Bora, you can snorkel with the stingrays and the sharks. You can bike up to the top of Belvedere. Um, you know, there are plenty of botanical gardens on many of these itineraries um, that you can visit. There's any kind of uh, sea uh, or ocean adventure that you want to do available, um, you know, with a, one of those uh, trek, bike treks or, or where you put the big helmet over your head and walk on the bottom of the ocean. Um, those are all available. Um, so I have another question here from John. So John asks, when is the best time to visit? So um, I mentioned we're in the same weather pattern as Hawaii, um, but we uh, are certainly 80 degree, degrees year round, 80 degrees uh, air temperature and water temperature. Um, also, we um, do have a rainy season, although you never know any time of the year can be rainy or not rainy, but typically uh, rainy season might run from December uh, through the end of March. So um, we're coming up um, on rainy season now. Uh, and the last uh, question here, one more, uh, oh, dress code. So very good um, from Deborah. Deborah, the dress code is very casual. So uh, during the day, of course, you're just gonna be in your bathing suit with a cover up and flip flops, certainly acceptable. You know, you are in French Polynesia, it is warm and um, it is very casual. Uh, in the evening, uh, gentlemen uh, will want to wear um, long pants for dining. Um, that is uh, the only requirement. So there's no suits, leave them at home, ties, leave them at home. You don't need anything like that. Um, you know, you don't wanna overpack uh, for a destination like this. So uh, any other questions, certainly direct them to your cruise web travel advisor. Um, the telephone number I have had uh, displayed here on the, on the screen, also um, their, their website, and you probably have your contact um, there. So uh, again, Maruru, and thank you for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time to learn about uh, Paul Gauguin. Happy travels.